A Texas mother was arrested and accused of unnecessarily subjecting her son to 323 hospital visits. Get this, 13 surgeries. The eight-year-old boy has reportedly been on a feeding tube, confined to a wheelchair, and even spent time in hospice. Then a month ago, his mother took him to the hospital, said he was suffering from seizures. No seizure activity was seen on the EEG. The medical staff did see what appeared to be whole body jerking, which led the doctor to write she was concerned the mother moved from exaggerating symptoms to inducing them. At that point, the red flags were raised, but they finally said enough's enough. They took the boy away and placed the boy in foster care. <laughs> and Child Protective Services got involved, and this ended up being a case of Munchausen by proxy, where the mother was intentionally harming her child. What I think unique about this story, both Docs and Mary, is that it took this long, 13 surgeries, 323 hospital visits, to figure this out. They can be very convincing, and, and I mean, this is their life to create this ongoing medical scam of sorts. Well, how do you, have you, have how you, you well, I'm said, sorry, but my yeah. first instinct was, how do you all do these surgeries without well, I, testing? I, 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 I think she was asked, poisoning yeah. this yeah. child to create yeah. fake symptoms and then induce this, just like mm -hmm. you said, when he had the whole body kind of jerking to sort of simulate So ingesting the child yeah. with something. I read yeah. a lot of cases with sodium. If a high level of sodium will cause a child to go into seizures. But uh, in and, this case, and I actually a lot had of, a question mm -hmm. for you because you're right, it took a very long time. I believe the father in this case actually tried to intervene and went to the court system and said that my child isn't sick because she was claiming first he had a genetic disease, then he had cancer, she was raising money on crowdfunding. I mean, it was kind of a crazy story, but then he lost visitation rights. They said, you don't believe your child is sick, we're not gonna even let you see him. And so sided with the mother. They sided with the mom. And in fact, the father was right on. This poor father, I can't imagine the anguish of that scenario. But you also have to question, it usually doesn't take this long no. for hospital workers, for doctors, for someone somewhere to see the red flags. All these diagnoses that don't go together, it sounds like doctor shopping also, which yeah, of course is the thing. So, so a lot of times, like if somebody becomes suspicious, they'll go to another provider. And at one point, the mom tried to put him on a lung transplant list. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was extreme. So for something like this, because this child could have died. What's, and I know it, you can't give us an exact estimate, but what's, what's the max sentence for something like well, that? Well, it's child abuse, and it yeah. depends upon the degree of child abuse. Um, I had a case where a baby was literally shaken into a coma, and the most I could give was 10 years, which I found really bizarre. Um, so it depends on the state and the statutes in that particular state. So it could be two years, it could be four, it could be 10. It could, it's the degree of the child abuse. But if the father, one half of the parental couple comes in and says, look, my child is healthy, but I'm concerned about what the child's mother is doing here. How does that slip through the cracks? I am shocked that based on reading this story that there wasn't enough evidence there to maybe be cautious inside with the father and do an investigation at that time isn't it always erring on the side of protecting the child, or was this a case where they thought the, th the father was maybe well, the, must have, the mother must have been really convincing. Oh, well, yeah. that's, but that's, yeah. that's, that's exactly. the scenario. Yeah. These parents who engage in this activity, they are convincing. They are con artists, and yes, there's a mental illness component, but they are so convincing that they can fool so many people in hospitals. But that's where, if to me, look, I'm I'm just saying this because I'm I'm passionate about this. When you see a child who's been abused in the emergency department, it's a very tough subject because you don't know: did the mom do it? Did the dad do it? Did a relative do it? Did someone? You don't really know. But the thing I learned in my career very early on is you err on the side of caution. It's heartbreaking to me that one parent went to the court system and said, "My child is getting basically damaged here." And this child, this child lost out because we, who knows what the long-term effects are going to be. My understanding is that this is actually thought, this Munchausen's by proxy is thought to account for about a thousand of yes. the 2.5 million yeah. cases of child abuse each year. So that's... And the internet helps because I can go and research, and how do I get my kids sick, or how do oh, I, what are the symptoms?